Hey everyone, my name is Ryu and I'll be doing a guest feature on Team DDD's channel. I go to Locals with them and you saw me in a previous duel video against Drip and today I will be profiling my striker list that I took to that current tournament. Sky Striker is one of my favorite decks because how it interacts with every other deck, especially now in this format with uh, Synchro Eldledge and you have Ad Emancipator. It's really strong to have hand traps and be able to control the board and then be able to go into Access Code Talker and OTK. But either way, it's similar to Ryan Yu's list. I changed one card in it currently, but I probably will be changing the side deck a little more depending on my locals. But that's just more preference towards you, but the main deck usually stays sort of the same. And I'll explain the one card change I did do in here. And then I'm just going to just tell you how my tournament went and then what I played against and especially how I feel this deck's performing now. So let me go ahead and get started for you guys. Let's start with the main deck. So in the main deck, we run the Triple Ray. Now, Ray is your combo starter. She is basically the heart and soul of the deck. She's every link, and she basically provides every sort of support you need. You always want to have at least one of her in your graveyard, so you can special summon it when they destroy your Sky Striker cards. And you definitely want to always be able to attack first with it and then link into your Hayate and start your play from there. So that's three Ray, and she's always going to be three, and she's the best monster in this deck, honestly. So then we have two Sky Striker Ace Rose. Rose is a really good card because uh, right now, whenever your opponent has a Link monster, which usually nine out of ten times they do have, you use Afterburners, and you're going to pop their monster. And whenever you pop their monster, you can special summon Rose from your graveyard, and it's a free summon. And when, Ray, when Rose is summoned that way then you're able to negate one of your opponent's face-up monster's effects. So it's really good, especially good in the mirror match if you're playing against Striker. You pop their Shizuku, for example, and then you can lock down their Ray when they summon it in resolution, and they can't tag out, and then they can't use any of their Sky Striker spells. It's just a really good card. It's another Sky Striker level 4 monster, so you can get your Link plays going. I wouldn't run it at 3. I think 2 is the perfect number for it. Okay, now that we got past all the Sky Striker monsters, now we get into the kind of the beefy part of the deck is basically hand traps, which you have to play in this meta nowadays. If you don't play hand traps, you're kind of going to just lose to everything. So the first one I play is three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. The reasoning for playing three Ash is just because whenever you play against Ad Emancipator and they go into Aurora Dawn or Needle Fiber, anything that you really just need to stop adding in resolution it's really good to just stop your opponent's way and then you can just keep going after that then next i play three effect veiler negating effects in this game at this moment is the best thing ever because you negate the needle fiber it just slows down plays and you can just keep going on with your turn and the good thing about effect veiler is that it's a spell caster which means you can go to it with Celine. So it's a good thing that's a spellcaster and a tuner because Needle Fiber and Selene make this card really good just besides being a generic negate during your opponent's turn. Now we have the three of the big rock boys. It's one of my favorite cards in the game at the moment just because it stops your opponents from overextending. It also kind of gives you control. You don't really have to worry about it being in this deck because you can always Widow Anchor the token. You can always send this off of Area Zero or link into a Zeke with it. So you never have to worry about dropping it and then being stuck with it. I haven't came to that scenario yet, but anytime I drop Nibiru, it's usually I can win the game unless I overextend. But either at that point, you have Nibiru and you're able to win the game or you're just going to lose. That's most of the time how this deck goes. Now, this is my one card different is I only play one Ghost Ogre and I play one of the new Ghost Mourner. Um, I play Ghost Ogre because you can pop face up cards like lose one turn or any sort of floodgate they try and put against you, like goes and match, which goes and match doesn't hurt as bad, but still it's just a pop anything. And you can also pop your area zero with it to be able to plus E them further and get into your ray. Then Mortar's a generic card, you know, it's just a monster gate. It's effect veiler, but just not as good, but also at certain areas it's good. In the mirror match, you play this on their Hayate, and they're just going to link it off, and they're going to take the 15 damage, and they're not going to get their drop. So it's just really good overall, and it's a wind type, so it's another hand trap that's a wind and a tuner. So it's really good for access code talker. Okay, now that we're done with the monsters in the deck, let's get to the spells. So first I'm going to start with the Sky Striker spells, and we have 
three shark cannon. Shark cannon is really good this format, no matter what, because you can special summon the opponent's jet after they link, and then you'll be able to stop them from having their jet, and you can have it for Hida, or you can banish any sort of an Emancipator card or the Block Dragon. You can banish any Orcus card to stop them and halt their combo so they can't get into their Galatea. And Sharkhand is just really good overall. It can win you games. You can take their Link Monsters and use it to Link Climb yourself. Sharkhand is just really overpowered this format, and I would definitely run it at three no matter what. Then next, I play to Afterburner. Afterburner is one of the most crucial spells in this deck now, just to be able to pop monsters. Just being able to pop monsters, put pressure. Even if it's a bait to bait and negate, they're going to have to negate it, and you're going to be able to Widow Anchor. So it's a really good bait card, and overall, it's just a monster pop, and sometimes it's a free spell pop. And it's really good, and you should always just play Afterburner if you can. Next, we play to Widow Anchor. Widow Anchor is self-explanatory. It's one of the most broken Sky Striker spells in the game to be able to take something and negate it at the same time. It's really good that you can take an opponent's monster and attack for game, and I think Widow Anchor is probably the best Sky Striker card be behind Engage. Then we have Area Zero. Area Zero is your generic spell that lets you get into your Ray. You pop, you pop this with multi-roll, or you pop your Ray turn one and chain, and you're able to get a plus off of it. I wouldn't run it at three because it's cloggy, and after you have your one on the field, it's not as good, so I would only say at two. Then, of course, the one ofs we have one multi roll, one Hornet drones. And the reason you only play one of because you can only play one. Uh, Hornet drones is a really broken card this format because you can normal summon a tuner and Hornet drones and be able to get into access to Hawker just like that. Multi roll is just be able to survive grind games. It's not as crucial as it used to be. If you're able to set it up, you want to set it up around two, turn two or three, you just want to guarantee you have a way to get back into Ray and to get back into your Sky Striker links to be able to recycle. But it's still a good card and you need to play it regardless. Next is the non Sky Striker spell cards. I play three Cosmic Cyclone. Cosmic Cyclone is really good this format because you can banish Elplich cards and they do not get their pluses after they go to the graveyard. You can also banish Necros cards so where they can't recycle. So Cosmic Cyclone overall is good. It helps you out evenly matched. It helps you out whatever you need to out. So Cosmic Cyclone is definitely, I would say, three of. It's better than MST. You don't really have to worry about popping your own Area Zero. So just run Cosmic Cyclone. Then next we have three Pod of Desires. Pod of Desires is Pod of Desires. You draw, three, or you draw two cards and you just plus. Uh, no reason not to play it at three because it's a spell card in your graveyard and it gives you pluses. And then the one ups, I play one Rhoda. Rhoda's self explanatory, gets you to every Sky Striker card in your deck, basically. One Upstart Goblin, that makes this deck 39 cards. You can give your opponent a thousand life points, it doesn't really matter because you're going to OTK, and regardless, it's a three plus draw for you. And then you have Terraforming. Terraforming is how you get into your area zero, and it also gets you into the one Mystic Mine we play. So if your opponent builds a board and you can't successfully break it on your turn, you just drop Mystic Mine until you can draw your resources to break that board. So that is all of the spell cards. And then last we play is three Impermanence. Impermanence is just a must-have in this deck. You're playing hand traps. You have to be able to shut your opponent's monster effects down. And if you can also set up an Imperm Calm against your opponent to be able to negate anything that's going to attack your Sky Striker cards or pop your Sky Striker cards, it's really good either way. A lot of people forget to play around in permanence nowadays, so you just it's just good. So that is it for my main deck. And then side deck we have here, let me see. We have three Shizuku. Shizuku is your in phase searcher. She is all it makes you plus. The good interaction you can do with this is if you have multi-roll on the board and Shizuku, you can add your widow anchor or shark cannon with Shizuku. Chain it during your M phase, either in a get her effect, banish one of your opponent's monsters, and reset it with multi-roll, and you'll have it again for next turn. It may get banished afterwards, but it's still another resource that you had to go out-resource your opponent. Next we have is three Kagari. Kagari is one of the best Sky Strikers in the whole game besides Ray. Um, she lets you add your Sky Striker spell cards from your graveyard. So what you do is you ditch them off of your Hayate, and when you ditch off your Hayate, you pick it right back up with your Kagari. And it helps you be able to recycle all the cards in your deck and get access to any Sky Striker spell you need without Shizuku on the end phase. 
Next we have is Triple Hayate. Hayate is the one that attacks your opponent directly, and then you can send a Sky Striker card to your graveyard. Usually, if I'm going first, if I have the resources, or if I'm going second, I have the resources, I would ditch Ray so I have a guaranteed way to get back into my Ray if they do decide to kill my Hayate. It's just really good to set up a backup plan, and it's really good to just always have something in your hand to be able to keep Hayate alive or Ray alive. Keep your cycle going so you have your striker cards. Next is the last Sky Striker, which is Sky Striker Ace Kaina. Kaina is really good. Um, if you watch my game against Strip, I went into her game three and I played a Sky Striker spell just to get the 100 plus life points to win in time. Kaina is really good for that aspect as you can gain life points or if you... They kill your Sky Striker card and you get back into Ray. You can just link your Ray away. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you can use Kaina and target your opponent's monster so they can't OTK you that turn. And it saves your life and then you're able to keep playing that turn and break your enemy's board. The next is Zeke. Zeke is just a generically good card. Yeah, you you do use sometimes the effects to banish your opponent's monster until it comes back to the end phase. It is good, but mostly the thing you do is you steal your opponent's monsters and you link into this just so you can go back into your other Sky Striker links and get rid of their cards. So that's why you only play one. And then we play the cards that let you get into Access Code Talker. We play the needle fiber and the needle fiber summons effect bailer which you then go into selene and selene then lets you special summon back that effect bailer and then you go into access code talker and just doing that by itself as you usually go with a sky striker link that's already two pops right there and anything else you have in your graveyard besides that plus selene is just more fodder for you to you for you to be able to pop cards and the last card in our extra deck is hita the fire chomper Heat is really good because now whenever your opponent goes into that Jet Synchron, you can Shark Cannon it to your turn so they can't do the ditch to Special Summon it. Whenever they discard to pay the cost, you take it, and then you summon your Heat the next turn, and then you take that Jet Synchron that you put back in their graveyard, and that lets you go into Selene because it is a Spellcaster. So it's really good in this format just being able to take a Fire card and then going into it. Same thing with Salomon Great. It's just another way to get into your Axis Cod Talk or OTK. All right, last thing we have here is our side deck. So side deck's pretty generic choice. Uh, I'm probably going to change a decent amount of it because I didn't like how a lot of it played, but it's still good nevertheless. Um, so I played three DD Crow. This is really good going against uh, Necroz, going against Adamancipator, going against any deck that needs a certain card in the graveyard. You can just banish it, and it's just free pluses for you, basically. The only thing is you can't really get into your... Sky Striker, or you can't, not your Sky Striker at least, but you can't get into your Transcode Talker or your Needle Fiber with it because it's not a tuner. That's the only really downside why you don't main deck TD Crow. But besides that, whenever you need it, you side it in and it's really good. Now, I play two Jamming Waves in the side deck because I'm not really too worried about main deck main decking these because I have three Cosmic Cyclone. But when I do play back row decks, I put these in because it's a non-target it's really good and I definitely think it's one of the best cards. It's a good way to get around Sergio and it's just a generically good card. Next I play the uh, the package that really makes people mad. Double Mystic Mind, Set Rotation, and Metaverse. So basically if you're playing against Ad Emancipator and you drop these against them or you drop Mystic Mind after you start your turn and they can't negate it, they lose because they can't resource themselves. You go into Ayate and you just attack them because they can't get rid of their whole board. So you drop this against people and you win games, honestly. Mystic Mind is one of the best cards because if you're going against opponent's board, you Mystic Mind and go into a Kaina or Ayate and you just pass. Unless they can go into that Link 4 or whatever they need to get into, you win the duel right there, basically. You can deck them out or you can just poke them with Ayate till they die. Then the Floodgates I play, 3 Solemn Judgment, and then I play 3 There Can Only Be One for whenever somebody tries to make me go first. Whenever you make me go first, I'm going to set Solemn Judgment and I'm going to play There Can Only Be One because you play this against that Emancipator, they lose. You play this against any deck that's Machine, they lose. It's just generically a good card. And then Solemn Judgment is just negate their first summon and then usually you negate a normal summon and they can't go off any further. So it's just self-explanatory. 
I really like how the deck plays now, now that you have access code talker and you're actually able to OTK people and you'll be able to put damage out on board, it's overall just good. I think I would put it around like a tier two, maybe tier one. It's really able to stand up to meta right now. And I would recommend if you want a fun deck that's sort of controlly, but you can also one punch somebody, I play Sky Strikers. Again, I'm gonna thank TD, Team DDD for letting me be on their channel and showing off my deck. I hope you guys have a great day and I will be signing off.